Women's artistic gymnastics has drastically evolved over the years, and with that, a lot of changes have taken place. Some for the best, others not so much. In this video, we'll take a look at things that have become less and less common with each passing cycle, or have completely disappeared from the compositions being performed nowadays. Mounting the beam with an acrobatic series used to be more popular in the 80s and 90s. Gymnasts would grab the attention of the viewer from the get-go, as this was a very flashy and gutsy way to start the routine. However, there's quite a bit of risk involved in performing such mounts, as one inch off to the side could end in a fall, and a full point deduction on your first sequence is one of the worst ways to start a routine. It can be very challenging to mentally recover from this and stay focused for the rest of the exercise. So, this is one of the main reasons most gymnasts avoid taking big risks on their mount. Nonetheless, with the right choice of elements, these combinations could still be pretty beneficial in terms of connection bonus, and even help fulfill the acrobatic series requirement on this apparatus. Luckily, we still have a couple of gymnasts, like Italy's Manila Esposito, who keep the trend alive. Still on the topic of mounting the beam, handstand mounts used to be more popular, up until the early to mid 2000s, but unfortunately have gone out of style ever since. They were a wonderful display of balance, strength, and control, and some athletes even created their own trademark pose, which set them apart from the other competitors. But as cool as these mounts were, realistically, they simply consume too much time and energy. On top of that, their current ratings are not very encouraging either. Modern gymnastics heavily focuses on two main avenues, big skills with high degrees of difficulty and connecting elements to boost the gymnast's start value. So, wasting 10 seconds on a mount that is just going to receive a C or D rating at most is simply not smart or worth it. There's also no incentive from the code to perform them, as, unlike the dismount, the mount does not have to be among the eight counting elements. Skills finishing in a handstand position mid-routine have also gone out of style in modern gymnastics. They were particularly popular among Eastern European gymnasts, and the handstand position had to be held for at least two seconds. However, as mentioned before, the focus is now on big moves and connecting skills. The ratings of these elements in the 2022 code of points vary between C and D, which is also not a great incentive. One of the main criticisms nowadays is, for an apparatus named the balance beam, there are very few instances where gymnasts actually showcase balance and control. Some viewers have even expressed their concern that this event has become sort of like tumbling on the floor. The only difference being on a 3.9 inch piece of wood, 4.1 feet in the air. Truth be told, hip circles on beam were never super popular, but they were definitely more common up until the early to mid 2000s, especially among European gymnasts. However, as soon as the new scoring format was introduced in 2006, they went completely out of style. Gymnasts are required to have an element or move close to the beam with a part of the torso, so hip circles would actually be perfect to fulfill this requirement. But the common sentiment among fans seems to be that these skills are not exactly pleasing to watch. And on top of that, they don't fit the current style of gymnastics, which is heavily tumbling focused. So no one seems to be too worried about hip circles not coming back for the foreseeable future.
connecting four acrobatic skills in a row without changing direction was a thing of the 80s and 90s. Most of these combos included back handsprings and layouts step out in varying orders. But the 1997 code introduced a new rule that still stands today. Acrobatic elements on beam may only be repeated twice within one connection. So, one of the most impressive quad series, a back handspring to three layouts step out, was practically banned, since the gymnast was only allowed to perform two counting layouts within the connection. Even Elodie Lussac's back handspring layout step out back handspring Rolfova would only receive two tenths under the current rules, which is a poor incentive for any gymnast to train such a complex combo, when they can get the same points for linking an aerial walkover to two B-level jumps. So, in most cases, quad series are not worth performing, given the reward does not justify the risk. It's also worth noting that quad series favor shorter gymnasts, as the beam has only so much length. Back then, 14-year-olds were allowed to compete at the Olympics, but the age limit has been raised to 16 cents, and we're also seeing more athletes in their mid to late 20s still competing. Going through puberty can ultimately affect one's height and make quad sequences less realistic for them. Skills ending in arabesque position were common around 2007 and 2008. They were variations of some of the most common acrobatic elements on beam, like aerial walkovers or front somersaults. With takeoff from one leg, the gymnast would flip forward and land on the free leg, holding the arabesque scale at 90 degrees for at least two seconds. The 2009 code, however, introduced a new connection formula that changed how judges perceived them. From that point on, these types of skills would be considered two different elements linked together, and not an individual skill. But to be considered a scale, and earn the point one bonus, the leg separation must be 180 degrees. A 90 degree amplitude is not considered a proper scale, nor credited as a skill. As a result, the arabesque ending skills were removed from the code and never to be seen again. Dismounting to the side of the beam instead of at the end was common until the early 2000s. Gymnasts often used gainer elements, like double twists, even performed in combination at times. However, as the sport evolved and its level of difficulty increased, gymnasts were forced to step up their game, and there was simply no room left for such skills. A double twisting gainer, for example, carries a C rating, which is considered fairly easy for elite standards these days. On top of that, from 2006 to 2016, one of the compositional requirements of this apparatus was to dismount with a minimum D-level skill. Most gymnasts use the whole length of the beam to generate more speed, and consequently more height, to execute harder dismounts. It's also worth noting that there are no mats to cushion the landing on both sides of the beam, so gymnasts or coaches would have to place them there manually before the start of the routine. Nonetheless, these dismounts are still common in NCAA gymnastics, which doesn't have the same level of difficulty as the elite programs. Which skills, or combos, should make a return to modern gymnastics? 